Well, here we are with projects. We're going to do projects six and seven together. So how do we work this? We want to create an efficient frontier. So we need our data from project 1B. Again, if you go back to 1B, we need the risks and returns of our variables, of our securities, if you will. So here's the mean standard deviation. If we go out, we don't want all these things. We don't want to go clear out. We don't need the economic data here or that T-bill rate. So we'll just copy that. And again, when you're remembering to copy, always remember to pay special. So where pay special is a value, plugs it in right there. Then we also need to do the same thing with the labels. So we get the labels and yeah, we don't need them all. Copy, get the labels, put them right here. And yeah, we need to do, again, pay special. And just do the value so they plug in. Bink, there we go. Next thing we need to do is we need to convert it into this column, column columns rather than rows so right here again we're going in this case we're going to pay special values transpose think so there's there so you see our data is identical now what we're going to do the next step before we actually talk about where we're going to go the other thing we need is we need the covariance matrix from 1b now if you remember when we created this data, we calculated covariance. So here's our covariance matrix. But as you see, it is also half, right? So this half is the mirror of that half. So if you were to kind of flip this over on its axis here, um, they would both be the same. So both, so what we need, again, they only print out half of the matrix. It would be nice if you could choose that. So what I've done is I've also over here, I've created both halves. So you see that these are equal, they're identical. So what we want to do, what we need to do is we need to start with the labels on the left. We don't need the labels on the top. We just need the labels on the left. Just copy those. And we're going to input, we're going to start right here and copy values, right? So there it is. We have our values are copied. They're exactly identical. So let, now let's talk. Now that we have the data set up, let's talk about what we want to do. We want to create an efficient frontier. Efficient frontier has assets who are plotted in a return risk matrix or a return risk graph, if you will, where returns are on the vertical axis risk is on the horizontal axis. So we want it to solve for some specific portfolios. And if you look here, you can see that we have, we have a minimum variance portfolio. We also have maximum slope. So this would be the portfolio. We want to find the portfolio that's going to create the least amount of risk. And also we want to create a portfolio that would maximize the sharp ratio. In addition, we're going to assume we're going to invest a thousand dollars. So this will tell us what does the portfolio look like when you invest a thousand dollars for the minimum variance portfolio, and what does the maximum slope portfolio look like? Again, if we invest a thousand dollars. So how do we do this process? How do we go through the process? Essentially, what we do is we use the we use the solver function. So if you go up and use the solver function, and again, depending on, you have to make sure that the variables are obviously set up. So in this case, what we want to do is here is our standard deviation. So we want to find the minimum standard deviation for this portfolio. Uh, we want to change the variables. So the variables we're changing are the weights 
and we want those weights to be between zero and one so we don't want to allow any short sales and of course all the weights have to add up to one so I've already uh, done this a couple of times and what I can tell you is that from time to time when you do these kinds of problems there is no solution so in this case what I've been able to find out is that um, there is no solution for the minimum variance so it there, it doesn't show up how you take these things and how you create that portfolio so in this case what we want to do is we can solve for a number of things in this case let's just say 0.015 or we want 1.5 percent as our variance or standard deviation so if we click the solve functions let's see if we get an answer so you click on solve and hey it found a solution now if we want to do another one right we can restore the original values go back let's go to data solver again right so now so let's maybe maybe let's see if we get a little bit lower 0 0.01 so again hit solve and, and it found a solution so you see here we have a one percent standard deviation here so let's use that right so let's, let's just say okay so we're going to take that one and all you need to do is copy this row copy this row right here and there it is so again for this portfolio right it's going to minimize um i should have uh let me go back let's do this and we want to paste special as values so we get all the values i want them all to work yeah so now the values work so here we go all right so now here's the also what we would spend on these assets so Again, let's make it uh, a little easier to read here. So for a minimum variance portfolio, for one that would create a 1% risk level, right? Uh, so this is how you would invest for $1,000. So you put $96 in, uh, 96 cents in hand. Most of ours is going to go into this ACCBX, right? So this is our portfolio. And if you think about these this portfolio right the bonds have the least amount of risk so they're going to be have the greatest amount of value so now let's also then go up let's go to data again go to data click on solver and now we want to maximize the slope so now you do maximize again let's take this we want to go to slope so that's in the right thing and again, so we're going to maximize that. Everything else stays the same, and we solve. See if we get an answer. Ah, so now we have a problem. We don't have an answer. So let's restore the original values. Go back. See what we have to do. Let's again, let's just see. I mean, you have 0 .3091, right? So again, let's just see if we can prevent or create. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, data solver. Let's find a value, and it's, again, it's it's not deaths, it's not percentages now. So we can do, let's say 0 0.600, and you solve for that. See if we get an answer, and we didn't get an answer. So again, we got a little bit of a problem. So again, we're going to have to work our way through this to see if we can create some um, examples or some other portfolio. So let's just say point. Uh, five zero. Oops, I'm sorry, that's not right. No, that's okay. So obviously we're having some challenges here. So again, if we can't solve it, so let's just let's just move our way up and just create some portfolios, right? So just on your way up, we want to create. Oops, I'm sorry, I should have gone back. I wanted to. Solver. Uh, restore the original. Ah, uh, now I now I messed it up. Okay, so let's go back again. I'm sorry, I messed this up. Make sure that we can get this fixed. We want to. Um, um, so 
once we've crashed this thing, I guess we've just crashed it. So very quickly, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get out of this real quick. Again, if you get that point, it's just not worth messing with it anymore. Don't save it, right? We don't want to save this right now. So let's just go back and then pull it right back up. Okay, so we're in Proverbs 6 and 7. Here we are, the original thing here. So let's go data, solver. And again, so we need to get rid of, we're going to get rid of some of this stuff. Right? So we wanted to minimize, and we were at, we had a value of 0 0.015. We solve for that. Right? That gave us an answer. Again, so we copied that. So again, I'm just catching up real quick. Copy, put it right here. D. Right? There we go. So I think I changed it. It was 1%. Now I, now I made it. Uh, it's 1.19 is what it gave us here as our solution. So. That time it gave us a solution at one, and, um, we asked it for one and a half percent. It actually gave us a little bit more. Um, so it gave us this value, right? So now let's go and see if we can um, calculate a value. In this case, oops, I'm sorry, should have pointed to this. Solve. Now it goes to the right. There's the right answer. Sorry about that. So here's the right answer, the one we had before. Go down here. One and a half percent. Again, I put it right here. Do his value. And again, so we have a point, right? So now the next thing we need to do is then we need just to figure out uh, how we want to uh, work and create these other portfolios. We know that the maximum slope thing is not working for us. So let's just pick another return. Here's 0.35% return. And this example isn't working for us, right? The idea is you find these two points and then in between these points, we can find other, um, we can find other points, if you will, that will put us uh, create a line or a curve. So what we want to do is let's create a portfolio that has a slope that's point, uh, 0.35 instead of 2.348. So we go up here, here, go to data, go to solver, right? So now we want to take this A57. Let's get rid of this. Now we want to take the slope and we want to find a value. We want to find a value that's just a little bit more than that. So let's say this is 0 0.35. That should give us a solution, hopefully. There you go. So it has a solution. See, so it's 0.35. So again, we can take this solution, copy. We can put it right here. Again, paste value. And you want to do this several times keep maximizing the points right so we do it again right so you go data solver okay let's just go up here let's just go up by 0.15 so now we're looking at 0.5 so you do solve gave us an answer so here's 0.5 so again when we put this in what you'll see is it's going to be creating now it's not the portfolio that we necessarily want or it's not the picture that we actually want, but it's going to give us an idea of what maybe an efficient frontier might look like. Here's values. Okay. So again, now we've got this little curve here. So what you'll see is, you know, we're kind of, uh, let's look at the standard deviation here you see is going down. So we're moving in the wrong direction here. So again, 
for some reason, something with the data is creating this strange shape efficient frontier. We would expect it to be kind of curvilinear. So um, I've done this several times. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it just doesn't work. But now we're going down in standard deviation instead of up in standard deviation. So, you know, maybe we need, and now we see some rise in return here. So, I mean, let's just, uh, let's just do one more and see what happens. Do the solver. And this time, let's just say, what if this is 1.5? See what happens, see if this number is too big. And now we've now we've crashed it. So now we're going to have a problem of getting that back to where it was. Um, so that's fine. Again, one more time. Let's go here. Solver. Right. 0.75. Yeah. So it's giving us solutions for some of these, but not for all of them. So again, as you look. One of the things that it's telling us, right, is it's providing us with a potential um, solution of portfolios that fulfill certain um, requirements, if you will, that we want as far as, and again, you see, we're getting some weird shape. So what we're finding here is it's not a curvilinear function. So the combination of all these things is giving us some kind of weird shapes, if you will, as far as the um, uh, risk is concerned. So, I mean, standard deviation continues. Standard deviation continues to go down. Um, I, I don't know how much lower uh, it can go. Obviously, it can't go negative. So once we get to like 1.0, it only takes a second, right? Solver, change this to 1.0, see if this works, 1.0, and, and that's an error. So again, we're gonna restore, so it goes back. All right, so it won't go to 1.0. So um, I, don't, I don't know where 1.0 is, is gonna take us with respect to our uh, slope, obviously it's trying to give us maximized slope. But again, in this case, it's just giving us a weird picture. So what you'd like to be able to do, obviously, is create the efficient frontier. I think I have, um, let me see, I have this one. That's an older one that I did that gave me a nice picture so that you'll see that sometimes it works. I've put new data in here. So this new data is going to create some issues uh, when it comes to solving for the problems. And here you can see I created a nice curvilinear function. Down here is the minimum variance. Up here is where the maximum slope is. So sometimes it works with data, sometimes it doesn't work with data. But the nice thing you do is here's the efficient frontier. What you can do is say, well, you know, for my retirement portfolio, and remember, these are in monthly percentages, right? For my retirement portfolio, I need to earn, on average, I need to earn, uh, let's say I need to earn point, I need to add, get seven tenths of a percent a month, right? So that's less than 12, right? So that's like what, uh, seven tenths times 12 is like eight and a half percent. So let's just say I want a 1% return. How can I get a 1% return using these portfolio, these, uh, these securities here? So if we go to data, hopefully it works here. Again, I'm struggling with some of this, as you can see. We want to go in here. We want to change this. All right. We don't want it to be equal. We don't want the mean to be. We want it to be equal to 1%. So say OK. Now, in this case, we also are having... We're uh, less than one, greater than zero. So it's everything else is the same. Again, we want to minimize, but what's trying to minimize here is F18. I don't know what F85 is. Why is it point? It's pointing here. I don't know why. I don't want it to point there. I want it to try to minimize risk, standard deviation. And let's see if it works. Hopefully it works. Maybe it won't. Great. So great. So here is a portfolio. 
So this is what I wanted us to see. So again, if you, you say, okay, here, here is a portfolio. We go down here, let's copy this portfolio, copy to here, right? And this should be taken J62, which is this times G63, J62, this thing, times G63, sorry, times this. So again, I apologize this thing just is, but this should tell us what this portfolio is. Let me put it over here because I know it fits over there. Copy this. Let's just put it in this column so it calculates. Pay special values. Okay. So now this would be our portfolio would give us a 1% rate of return. So we this is how you would invest your $1,000. Right, so we make it, let's make it 10,000 so you can see a little bit better. Okay, go down here, let's make these two decimal places so we can just see the numbers just a wee little bit better. Let's get rid of all the decimal places. So, this is sort of how you would invest your money, and if you invested in your money, then you would earn one percent on your investment. So again, that's what we would like to see. Again, sometimes the data just doesn't work exactly right. See how you can do it, create some portfolios. Project seven is what we just did to say, hey, I want to create a certain rate of return. So decide what rate of return, again, remember their monthly percentages, and see how that works as far as calculating and creating a portfolio. Good luck.